Today I'm doing something totally different. I'm going to be doing a digital painting on a tablet. One of my favorite things about digital painting on a tablet is you can bring it with you anywhere. You don't need a whole lot of art supplies or a whole bag full of supplies to take it with you to Starbucks, to the library, out to a park, anywhere you wanna go to sit and paint. Now for this one, I'm using the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3. This is actually the older version. A new one just came out, the S4. I'll let you look up the specs on your own, but there's not a huge difference between the two. I think you'd be happy with either one. A lot of artists are also using the iPad. You want to have a stylus, ideally. This one is pressure sensitive. It's using the same technology as the Wacom tab. So if I push harder, I'm going to get a different type of brush or pencil stroke than I would with a lighter hand, which is really nice. And if you're thinking, I'm just not into digital painting, that doesn't sound interesting to me. It's not really any different than painting traditionally, other than obviously I don't have a hard copy, but you can make prints of anything that you do digitally. But the thing that's so great is it goes everywhere. When I was on the plane, I took it with me when I traveled and it's so small, it's easy to pull out and I'm not dropping colored pencils all over the place if, if there's a bump or if I'm just clumsy, which is more likely the case for me. You know, it's just really nice to have with you. This is what I take with me when I'm traveling. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where I've got the almost two hour version of this tutorial available for you now. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my weekly one to two hour long tutorials, along with all of my past tutorials. There's over 150, as you can see there on my website now. I also have a link where you can check out my video library on my website and get access to a free Margay colored pencil tutorial. I believe that one's near two hours long. Now to start with, I want to show you some of the past digital paintings I've done on my old Galaxy Note tablet. It, that one was actually a Note tablet. This one's just a tab. They changed the names. I don't know. But this gives you just a general concept of some of the stuff that you can do. It really looks like a painting. Now, this is not digital manipulation and I think that, or photo manipulation. I think that that's something that a lot of people misunderstand when they hear what a digital or so that somebody did a digital painting. They think that you're just putting filters over a photo and that's not what it is. This is actual painting as you'll see as we get going in the tutorial. But these were great because I was able to do a portrait for customers back when I used to do pet portraits. I could offer this for quite a bit less. I wasn't really using much in the way of supplies besides my own tablet. And they could print it. I would let them print them on mugs or pillows and different things like that, which was a lot of fun. So there's just a ton of stuff that you can do with digital painting. You can do concept art. I do that a lot where I'm just getting a general idea of what I want to paint or draw. And you get really, you can go super realistic or because of the way that the program that I'm gonna show you works with blending, you can also get more abstract or if you wanted to go more impressionistic and have your brush strokes really show. You can do all of that when you're painting digitally. Now I do want to bring up, when you're working on a tablet, depending on the program you're using, you're going to be somewhat limited in size. You're not going to get as big of a file for printing large prints as you would on like the Wacom tablet that I use with Photoshop. This one was done in Photoshop with the Wacom tablet and I'm a, this is a much, much larger file than I'm able to do on the tablet. So just want to throw that out there. Again, this one is done on the the in Photoshop on my Wacom tablet. So the files are able to be a lot larger, just a difference in the programming and the, I guess the software too, all, or not the software, the hardware as well. So you do want to be aware of that. You're not going to use a tablet to print some huge 30 by 40 inch poster. It's really going to get very pixely at that point. So moving on, this is the program that I'm using. It's ArtRage and you're able to adjust so many things on here. If you want it to look like you're working on rough watercolor paper, you can adjust that in the settings. You can adjust the color that you're working on the or the brightness of the type of brushstroke that you're going to get. You've got a lot of different filters and such that you can mess with. I personally just keep the grain down very low and the brightness down just low as well. I don't really use too much of this these other things, but you've got a lot of options here. Now, one of my favorite things about this program is the ability to blend your colors. You're able to blend and smudge things so it looks more like an oil painting. The other thing that I really like is that you can import a photo. If you want to trace your reference photo, that is really easy to do here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and choose my photo, going through my files. I need to find the actual photograph that I want to trace over. And now you know all of the photos that I had in my Dropbox. So let's just choose one of these or sit here and be super indecisive. Looks like that's what I'm gonna do as well. Wow, that really is what I'm doing here, isn't it? Pick the llama. 
you know you're going to choose the llama. There we go. So I've got the llama. You can pin it so you've got your reference photo right there next to the canvas that you're working on. And you can move that around if needed. But I can also take that llama and put it right on to my canvas itself to trace. So you can use this to practice your drawing skills. You can also do it if you just don't feel like drawing that day and you want to get into the actual painting portion. You can kind of skip that step if you wanted to this way. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a black line to trace over this guy to get that initial image drawn onto the canvas. And again, this is optional. You can freehand sketch this as well. It is totally up to you. I just wanted to show you one of the things that you can do with this program. So as I go through, I'm just loosely, I can zoom in, zoom out, however I need to. I'm gonna just loosely mark out what I would do. The same kind of um, information that I would include if I were freehanding is what I want to include if I'm going to trace this. And no, we're not gonna be drawing, drawing a llama today. He's just what I wanted to show you. One of the things that can be done with this program. Zooming out there. Now, when you're first starting to paint digitally, don't be frustrated if you are having trouble with it. If everything just seems fuzzy and out of focus, that happens usually when you're using a brush that's the wrong size, and we'll sh I'll show you more about that later. But there was a bit of a learning curve for me. It took me about four paintings and drawings before I started feeling comfortable enough that I could do portraits that were a similar quality to what my my fr actual like traditionally, I can't think of words today, my gosh, but traditionally painted or drawn artwork was. You can see zoom in and out. I'm just using pinch to zoom to change the size of my llama there. And then I can just hit this little eye mark to make my image disappear, my lines or the image itself. So I'm, I took the layer of the llama out, there is my drawing. So you can see it's very, very easy to get that outline if that's something that interests you. Or again, you can just freehand it like you normally would. Now, the next thing I wanna show you before we get into the project is just how easy you can blend things and how some of these settings are. You can adjust your the width of the brush you're using. You can adjust the brushes themselves. This pack comes with so many types, different types of brushes. So you just choose your color and you as you add in, depending on if you're using, like this is the oil painting one, you can see how things will start to blend together. There's one for watercolor, there's one for airbrush. I mean, you've got tons of different options. And then within those options, you have more options. So it does start to get very overwhelming with this program. I think that's the one thing that people have a problem with sometimes is uh, when reading the reviews, when people were, the complaints were generally that they didn't come in with instructions. It's just that there's so many options and you're going to have to experiment and play around with it. For the most part, I would say stick with one brush type, like the airbrush tool, just to get started. That really is enough. Now see there how I was able to come through and blend that just by adjusting the settings so you can make something that looks very, very much like an actual painting. So as we get started on this project, I've drawn out my macaw, everything, all the lines, the general lines I'm going to need are there. And you can adjust layers. You're gonna do this in layers just like you would with an actual painting. The difference is I can work on this layer and then add another layer underneath it and affect the previous layer without hurting the layer on top. It's actually really cool some of the things you can do there. So I'm going to start by just changing my color there for my background actually going to undo. I've got some brush strokes there I want to get rid of. Now I want to create a solid background color. So here are my layers. And I decided I wanted the layer underneath my line drawing. So see how I was able to just drag and drop that layer right where I wanted it to be and then filled in that background. So now I'm going to use the airbrush tool and start blending or getting this just out of focus background. And as I do that, some of this is, I'm going to let it be more translucent. Some of it, I'm going to have more opaque colors. You've got control over all of that in your settings. You can see how I can just drag around the color. You've got, it's just so easy to adjust everything with this. You're, you're, you've got every color available. And this is why I like taking this with me. If I'm going to travel, if I'm going to go paint at Starbucks, I like bringing this because I have every color. I'm not having to limit my supplies because I don't want to carry everything. I've got every color. I've got every medium with me. Or, you know, you've got the palette knife and watercolor tools, just so many different things you can do here. And it's not like I'm giving up traditional painting. This is just one more medium. That's all it is, is another medium. I always have people ask me when I, I share something that I painted digitally, freaking out, you know, or worried. I wouldn't say freaking out, but worried. You're not going to give that up painting, oil painting or colored pencil. I hope you don't change. No, I'm not. This is just another medium. See, I'm just layering all of that in there. 
Let one color overlap the other just like I would if I were using a real airbrush. And that gives me that nice out of focus look. And I can even come back through and either blur that background completely or I can use different tools to blend some of these colors together if I needed to. We're going to zoom in now. Still using the airbrush tool here. Switch to another type of brush. I believe that's the watercolor brush. And I'm going to block in my general color for the beak. Now, notice that I'm not just jumping straight to black. By using this color in this one, you can see I've got it a little bit translucent, so I can still see the lines I previously drew underneath. But I'm don't I don't want to jump straight to black on the beak. Yeah, it's a black beak. But if I do, it's just gonna look flat and cartoony. I want to get a little bit more detail in there. I want to get the shine and the reflection and all of the ridges in the beak. So I used just this base of brush. Brown, or I'm sorry, gray first. I know my colors, really. And if one brush doesn't look good, if, or if I make a brush stroke and I don't like how it came out, you've got an undo button. That's another great thing about painting digitally. I could just undo that, try a different brush. You can't really mess anything up. If something doesn't come out right, you're just going to undo it, try a different brush, and see if that comes out better. Now, a huge tip, don't ever forget this, save constantly. Every few minutes, make sure you're saving that project because if the program crashes and you lose hours worth of work, oh, it's painful. It really sucks. I think anyone who's painted digitally has probably experienced that and it, it, it sucks pretty bad. So make sure that you're saving your work constantly as you, you do go. And it doesn't matter what device you're working on, what program you're using, inevitably one of them's gonna crash on you. So always save your work. Now, when I get my base layers, I'm typically going to make them pretty, it's loose. I want my outer edges clean, but it's going to be very loose. One of the problems that a lot of people have when they start digitally painting is everything's fuzzy, like the background where nothing's in focus. You look at it and it almost bugs your eyes. Like, why is everything out of focus? You've got to change your brush stroke, especially if you're using the airbrush tool a lot like I do. You need to make your brush stroke a lot smaller and a lot more opaque when you get to those sharper edges. Be, be aware of where you want something to be soft and out of focus and where you want something to be very sharp. So here, those little lines, that's still with the airbrush. I just minimized my brush size so it was really, really tiny. And if you are brand new to airbrush, or to airbrushing, <laughs> brand new to digital painting, I do recommend while you get started, Focus more on the airbrush tool or just one paintbrush. Pick one paintbrush. And for me, that would be the airbrush tool. And learn, really master that before you mess too much around with the other ones. Otherwise, it gets too overwhelming. I think, like I was saying earlier, where people have a hard time with this program, simplify it for yourself. You can do this entire thing just with airbrush tool. Learn to really understand that one first. I, it, that would be my recommendation. I'm sure other people do it otherwise, but that worked really well for me when I was learning. And see, as I add this, it's the same as traditional painting. I mean, this would be the same as airbrushing here, but I mean, choosing your color, the way that I'm layering, the way that I'm blending, where I'm adding detail, where I want sharp lines, thick lines, all of that, it's the same. So where people get this idea, like I was mentioned, talking about earlier, where they think that digital painting is just photo manipulation, as you can see, it's not. I'm actually drawing everything here. And I don't know why there seems to be this stigma around digital painting like it's not real art. It absolutely is. It's just a different medium. So I'm going to leave the beak alone. I may come back and add more details to that later. I'm probably going to darken some areas up. But I'm going to start with the eye and see how I can remove my lines. If I'm not sure if I'm filling this in right, I can just remove or I just hit the little eye mark on that layer to pull it out. I want to get the upper section of the eye, the color here, to be a little bit darker than the bottom. You can see where it's shadowed by the upper section or the upper eyelid of the, the bird. And I'm a bit fuzzy here. See how I'm not like super worrying about my lines or keeping everything clean? I can clean that up later. It is important though. Don't forget to go back and clean things up if things are fuzzy and messy. And I zoom way in where I'm working on the tiny detail. And I've got this color, the white, pretty translucent. I'm just going to lightly go over everything here. You 
and still using that airbrush tool. For a larger area, you can just make your brush, brush size, well, say that 10 times fast, larger. So it goes a bit faster. This is all going to have wrinkles, so I don't need this to be super smooth. I just want to get this white base in there. And just pick one small area. I created another layer here. So these feathers are going to sit on top of the, the white, which is going to allow me to come back later and adjust the white without messing up these definite black feathers. So I'm going over what my original drawing was, but these ones are the ones that are actually going to show where I will end up removing the line drawing completely. And just like any other medium, there's no one right or wrong way to do things. Figure out what works best for you. Some people may want their line drawing to sit on top the entire time. Some people want it on the bottom. You're going to just figure out what method works for you. Now remember when you're painting, white is not white. You're going to want other colors in there. If you leave it flat white, it look, well, it looks flat. I'm getting some shadows here. I've got this rosy gray color that I'm using for the shadow so that the skin here looks like it's separated or it's raised up from the beak. I don't want this to look like it's just a flat transition between the two colors. So I've got that bit of a shadow. I'm also going to start pulling some of that rosy color into other parts of the white skin here. And going back and defining the beak a little bit more as I work too. Whenever you're painting or drawing anything with nature, whether it be wildlife or a landscape, make sure you get variation. You don't want every brush stroke, every line or pencil line. You don't want everything to look the same. If it does, it ends up looking stiff and very unnatural. Variation in your brush strokes is a really good thing. Again, you can see all, it keeps popping up where I save the file. You constantly want to save. And I've actually edited some, of, edited some of those saves out. There were a lot. Now I'm not done with really any of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and start blocking in the feathers on the top part of the head because I was starting to have a little bit of a hard time judging what values and what shades I wanted to use on the white. So I came up with my darker color first on the, where the green is going to go. And then I can put the green on top and let that dark color show through. Now, let's say I put the green in there and I thought that I had the dark, dark enough, but it wasn't. All I have to do is add another layer on top because a lot of these colors are translucent and I can just darken up a layer underneath what I just did. The way that you can layer things with digital painting is so handy. You see how I've got to let those dark areas show. I don't want to cover them all the way. I want to watch which direction these feathers need to go. Still using that airbrush tool. And I'm really worrying more about my values. Are my darks dark enough? My lights light enough than anything else when I'm choosing color? I'm You'll hear me on, in any medium I work in, your contrast really is just so important, the values. That is more important if you're trying to make your work look realistic than getting the perfect color, as long as you've got your values right. So I'm coming through and just going to start blocking in these darker shadows in between the feathers. One thing that's a huge difference between painting digitally versus traditionally is that digital paintings are extremely forgiving. It just between the undo button and being able to just add a layer on top or below, it's it really is once you get the hang of it, it is a it is easier because of that, I would say. If you're like me and you make a lot of mistakes you need to, to fix. So I'm starting with this darker orange and I'll also pull some of a bit of a magenta color. I want to get these darker browns, dark colors so that I can put the light colors on top. So just block all that in. I don't really need to worry about brush strokes here. I just need it blocked in. And now I'm going to come on top with some of these lighter colors and start building up my feathers. And the thing that I love so much about the, the pen with this tablet is if I push harder or lighter, it's going to affect that brush stroke. So just like if I were actually painting, I can use a lighter hand. It's a little bit smaller. I push harder, the color gets darker and 
and thicker or it really actually depends on how you have your settings you can tell the the tablet or the program within settings if you want more pressure to make the brush stroke more opaque or thicker you've got a lot of options there but it feels it ends up looking more like a painting than just something very very stiff Now for these black feathers, I don't want to jump straight to black. I want a lot of this grayish purple color to show through. So I'm going to put that in there first and then I will put the black on top of it. In addition to having the undo button, you've also got erasers that give you a lot of different effects too. So sometimes when you want to soften something, just erasing will, will do it for you. You also want to watch in this program, you can affect when you are blurring things out, if it's just the top layer or all layers. So that was something that the pre, I used to use Sketchbook Pro by Autodesk and that didn't have that ability. This one, you can do a lot with the way that you blend. You've got all, just so many options. Again, I know it's confusing if you're new to it, but once you get the hang of it, these options are amazing. I sound like this is a video specifically for Art Rage. It's not, I've never talked to those people. I just really like the program. And coming back through with the shadows. And these feathers on the bird, they're technically just black, but I want to get more depth in there. I don't want to just make it flat black and have it look like a cartoon. So pulling that magenta, because if you've been following me for very long, you know if I use orange, I'm almost guaranteed to use a magenta color along with it. I'm using that for my shadows. Wasn't necessarily in the reference photo I used, but it works. I really like the combination of magentas and oranges. Now I'm starting to come through with this brighter highlight. Gonna deepen up those shadows a bit more so that when I put the highlights on top, they show up a bit better. I apologize for it with this being sped up as much as it is when I move in or zoom in and out. I know that probably is kind of like watching somebody filming something with a handheld camera. Now, as I move through here, same thing, just affecting or going through and working on where are my lights, where are my darks. Now, I am alternating between cool and warm blues on these feathers. Most of the time when I'm painting, I go with one or the other. Either I'm using warm blues through the majority of it or cool blues through the majority. I don't typically mix those two. But with certain birds, you get a better look on the feathers if you do combine the warm and the cool blues. Peacocks, I do that a lot where I've got the really warm bluish greens or at the greenish blues, both of them, and then these really cool, almost purplish blues. And it gives you, if you do that in combination with the high contrast, that's how you get those shimmery feathers. These ones aren't supposed to be shimmery, but it does give you a nice effect. You can switch colors so quickly and easily here. And still using that airbrush tool. I know you're shocked. Most of the tools that are available, I wouldn't use on this. Like the pastel one really isn't of no interest. They've got a pen. They have one that's like glitter. They've got some different ones that I are definitely not. I mean, it looks like there's so many options. Most of those are, at least for me, useless. I mostly stick with the airbrush, the oil paint, and the water, the watercolor, and the palette knife. Sometimes the pencil and the ink. But that's about it for the, the, the selection that I go with there. I think there may be an option that you can remove some of those that you don't use. There's so many options in this pro program. I could be wrong, but I think I saw that. Maybe it was a dream. My dreams are very vivid. I can sometimes not tell the difference. So going through here, see, I've, I'm using now, this is the oil paint brush that I'm using there. And it's giving me a bit more of a harsh line and it's also causing this to blend in a bit more. So I'm getting like that wet into wet blending with the previous layers. 
back to the airbrush. And I continuously am adjusting the width of the brush and the opacity. And the numbers, you keep seeing that pop up. What that's doing, that's one of the ways that you're able to adjust the width of the brush. You can just type in the numbers quickly. There are a few different ways. You can also, where that number, the percentages you see up top, you can drag your pen across it to the left or the right to enlarge it as well. But if you want a very precise one, because sometimes when you're dragging it, it keeps going too far one way or the other, you can actually type in the numbers. And all of these harsh lines, I'm going to keep working. I don't want everything to look like it's outlined. Adding some highlights there. You can see how I'm making these, these brush strokes that are kind of sketchy so that the edges of the feathers are somewhat frayed. You don't want them perfectly rounded so that it looks like fish scales. Pulling in a little bit of a, a kind of a periwinkle purpley color or periwinkle blue. I don't know. Making stuff up again. But I'm mixing again, I've got some of that purplish tone or the blues that are closer to purple and then I've got some that are much warmer. I'm gonna come through now and start adding my shadows. And you're surprised, still using that airbrush tool. you just keep layering and messing with it until it looks how you want it to. And I'm still going to look, when I work on this, I look at my reference photo just as much as I would with any other medium. If you're going for realism or photorealism, you're going to use a reference photo. I don't know why kids seem to be having their head. If you use a reference photo, you're cheating or it's not, you're not a real artist. I don't know where they got that idea, but that's just not how art works. If you're working for super realistic, you've got to have a reference photo or a live subject, you know, if you've got a live model or if you've set up a still life, some, you need something to look at. If you try painting from your memory, you're going to get a more stylized um, look. So like cartoons, that sort of thing is fine. But when you really are trying to get something very, very realistic, you need something to look at. Some final details here. Now, if you're an artist who uses the website Paint My Photo to get reference, you cannot use their photos unless they changed it. But last I checked, it was in their terms of service. You could not use their photos on that website for digital paintings, which makes zero sense to me, but it's their website. They can do what they want. So do be aware where you get those photos. But there is the finished painting there. And as you can see, digital painting, you can get something that looks super realistic. I could even go more realistic than this if I wanted to spend more time on it. It's such a versatile medium. So much fun to work in. One more thing that I wanted to bring up that I forgot to mention earlier was this specific tablet. You can get the keyboard that's made by Samsung. It's a little bit pricey, but it is really good. I've used other keyboards for tablets and was never happy. They kept dropping letters. There were a lot of problems with that. This one, I can actually type pretty fast on. For me, I typically type around 85, 86 words per minute. On this one, I was only 10 words per minute slower when I did the speed test. So this definitely is a, very comfortable for a tablet it's a very comfortable keyboard to work in and it just folds up and is a part of the case so that one is really really convenient if you think you want a tablet for your keyboard definitely get the samsung one that's made specifically for that tablet